Thank you. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, back a few years ago, John Eidson, the father of 1588, uh, published a paper uh, called Timing in the Last Inch. I decided that after seeing some of the form factors from OCP, we might need to expand that more than an inch, and why not change as well to SI units at the same time? So timing in the last few centimeters. Um, so my name's Kevin, I work at Intel, and a huge credit to Chris Hall, who one of my colleagues who took some of the measurements that I'll be uh, representing today. So just to really give away the entire story here, uh, distributed applications have a benefit from precision time, and you've heard already today, you'll hear some more about the ap those applications. And one thing that comes up again and again is a microsecond or so end to end within, be within, uh, be within uh, a data center or maybe with respect to UTC, sometimes going below a microsecond, sometimes substantially below a microsecond, but in, on that kind of order. A hundred nanoseconds is, is pretty achievable. We've seen uh, across an ethernet network, for example, and uh, sometimes even down to the single digit nanoseconds. And again, we see applications emerging and we see bandwidths and latencies going to an extent where the accuracy of the time also needs to improve uh, commensurately. But the network time, whether it's PTP or other, typically ends at the network interface card, at the NIC, at the ethernet card. And that makes sense because you want hardware timestamping of transmit times, receive times, and in part because from the NIC into application software, there's a lot of jitter, and that's part of the motivation for what I'll be talking about today. So notoriously, software is bad at being uh, deterministic and measuring time offsets. PCI, the PCI SIG, defined a protocol called the Precision Time Measurement, PTM, and it addresses the, this last inch, last few centimeters problem by applying the ideas of 1588 to the PCIe bus itself. Okay, so we're addressing the synchronization between the network interface and the application software. So if we look at a, a model for the, um, a methodology for testing timing and synchronization. Well, we can see uh, two systems here. We have uh, applications running, we have some operating systems, we have some CPU hardware clock, the hardware is in, in uh, kind of a bluish color. Then we have the network interfaces, and, and often there's a pulse per second, for example, that comes out of a network interface, and we can hook that up to a logic analyzer or oscilloscope and we can uh, see how um, uh, well those are aligned from one NIC on one system across the network to one NIC on another system. And uh, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty useful. Um, what, we, uh, what, we, what we often is not measured with hardware is the synchronization from application <laughs> software, uh, software accessible time in the CPU to software accessible time in another CPU. And out at the Experience Center, there was a demo which, which, which showed that with an oscilloscope, uh, with Julian who's in the audience here. So that's one end-to-end -end measurement. What we can also do is we can measure then this, uh, what's called the time-aware GPIO is what we're calling it, of the CPU, down to the network interface. So that's the, the second oscilloscope. And uh, what Julian was showing was the end-to-end. -end. What I'll be talking about today is just within the system from the application clock down to the network interface. And the ideal is we be able to show that the clock accessible in the CPU by the application software, for example, x86, it's the read TSC instruction, then there's a multiply shift add. Um, we want to know that that was synchronized to the, the really pristine time over the network delivered through PTP or some other means. Okay. So again, I'm gonna be talking about this in the last inch. So here's some measurements. These are in the lab. Uh, these are it's an experimental setup. Uh, it's based on a uh, uh, atom-based uh, 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 CPU. 
And what we can see are uh, several curves. So let me just go through one of them one at a time. We have with precision time measurement, PTM, without precision time measurement, meaning that software reaches down with an instruction, an MMIO read, asks the NIC what time it is, eventually gets a response back, hopefully no interrupts occurred, uh, can maybe do that several times, estimate how much of the time was going down, how much of the time was coming up, and then doing some uh, averaging perhaps and coming up with an estimate of what time does the NIC think that it is now based on software's time. So that's the, the red line at about 500 nanoseconds. If there's no load, so we have idle system and then we have pretty draconianly loaded system just to show how bad it can, how bad it can get. What's interesting about the red line is that it's sitting there at 500 nanoseconds. If we look at, then again, this is, this is ground truth synchronization within the system, looking at a pulse per second out of the CPU and a pulse per second coming out of the NIC. If the software, PTP4L in this case, knew that there was a 500 nanosecond offset, it would of course make an adjustment over time to zero that error out, but it, it doesn't know about it, and so it actually persists. So when we see people uh, uh, presenting numbers, and it was the best you could do in the past, you look at how much variation uh, uh, does the software see in its estimate of what time it is, and it drives that to zero, and you see variation. What we see here is though is that's variation around the 500 nanosecond mark. So that's the unloaded. If we add loaded, that's where the blue uh, looks like maybe the Himalayas <laughs> uh, that's above. So uh, there are two things to observe, obviously. One is that the jitter is dramatically uh, increased, but also the average error increases as well. So if you had a uh, very uh, low bandwidth, high, uh, very low bandwidth, low pass filter, eventually you could average out all of the jitter, but now you'd be uh, well, more than 500 nanoseconds in error. So that's the without PCIe PTM unloaded and very heavily loaded, both CPU load as well as PCIe traffic. Then we have on the zero line, it's a little hard to see, apologize for that, but I really don't apologize for that, is the with PTM both loaded and unloaded. And it's, it's, it's small, in fact, I'll zoom in and you can see that basically the time synchronization inaccuracy is uh, immune to load, which would make sense. If you have, for example, a PTP network and you have hardware time stamping and you have uh, on-path support in your entire network and you're measuring all of the residence times or have a boundary clocks, et cetera, and no, no uh, uncompensated queuing delays, that PTP would also be immune to load. So that's, that's what we would expect and, and that's, what we, that's what we see here. Okay, so uh, just a system level diagram. <clears throat> so we have uh, system time at the top and the way it works is you can see an i-octal on the, on the left which is the um, PTP system offset precise. Uh, with Linux PTP, if you have PTM support in your system, and you ask for a timestamp, which is system time comma PTP time, Nick, please provide this to me, uh, then the, the Linux PTP will actually add the underscore precise to the ioctal, and you'll get the hardware PTM cross timestamp. So it happens automatically if your hardware supports PTM. If you don't have PTM, then the precise is removed, software does the best that it can, which is you know, still is 500 nanoseconds if you have an idle system, it's, it's not the end of the world, which we know because the world still exists, right? Um, then it's also true that if there's a switch in the way, PCIe switch, the PCIe PTM specification also allows a PTM capable switch to measure the residence time, the queuing delay of these TLPs, and then compensate for, for that as well, just like PTP compensates for queuing delays if a switch supports the transparent clock. It's basically that same model. Okay, I won't go into the protocol, but uh, you can see a, a snapshot of, of, of it below. So, takeaways. 
Uh, software time transfer in the last few centimeters introduces an offset and potentially significant jitter, depending on the workload. Um, uh, the software is not aware of the bias when we see numbers of here's what our synchronization can achieve. Usually it's, uh, there's, there was no way in the past of knowing what the bias was and the load affects it. Hardware, hardware, PC, P, hardware time synchronization over the PCIe interface <clears throat> solves all of these problems. Doesn't introduce, there's, there's no bias. Um, the jitter is low, it's immune to, to system load. As we would expect from a hardware-based timestamp where there's no queuing that is not compensated for. So call to action is uh, PCI PTM. It would be great to see more and more devices that implement this in order to usher in this future of precise time inside of the system as to, to really complement the massive improvements that are, that are present now in the network with PTP and other protocols, uh, precision oscillators to, to, to solve that last few centimeters problem. Uh, contribute to OCP TAP, and uh, as extra credit, it would be really nice to have some kind of function where we understand the value to certain applications based on the clock synchronization accuracy and as a function of best case communication latency. So thank you. Okay. Kevin, this, this has been great. Uh, thank you for sharing that. One question that I always ask you, when can we have a system? What, when do you think that we'll have systems and what type of systems the market will first see so we could start enabling that? Yeah, good question. Um, it's a fair question. New technologies that require two ends of a link to, uh, to, to work always introduces a chicken and egg problem. So if you search around the, uh, on the web, you'll see a lot of products that do support PTM today. Um, Intel has support in Atom and core products, um, FPGAs of multiple vendors, IP cores that you would maybe integrate. Um, and I'm happy to say, the, very happy to say that I was authorized to say that the next uh, Intel Xeon will also have hardware support for, for the capability. So. The next step would be to have the server OEMs build around the Xeon, these capabilities, enable that in a system level. So BIOSes and whatever have you yep. around it, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, BIOS support, Linux already supports the enumeration of PTM capability yeah, registers that's right. and so on. So, but there are, there are a few other pieces that do need to be brought together so that the whole system is capable of the performance and the ability to measure what the actual ground truth is. Looking forward to it, and uh, we need to work with uh, a few of our system vendors, friendlier ones, to, to get that all out in the market. Thank you. Next question. Other questions? Yeah, he has a game. Uh, yeah, I think this is very cool. I'm a very big fan of this. Uh, and uh, I think uh, when it is uh, more widely available, uh, it will allow stuff uh, which is not uh, possible today. I mean, it literally uh, improves performance by something like two orders of magnitude uh, for developers, and they can start taking advantage of that. But let me ask you this. Like, in the, in the protocol, uh, it, you deal with the, uh, you have this uh, like transparent clock thing where you can take uh, uh, some delay into account and compensate for it. So is that, like, what is, why does this make everything better? What, what is the source of it? Is, it? is it like an asymmetry today which makes the traditional method uh, not work? Or what, what, what is it? Yeah, are you asking where does that bias come from of 500 nanoseconds, for example? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it's due to the delay of completing a, a, a memory, memory mapped I.O. read request to a peripheral, which could be far away in the hierarchy, even though it's just centimeters away. So you issue, you, you, you ask, uh, what, what, what happens is the CPU reads its local timestamp counter, for example, and then it issues a request. It waits for that request to be completed, and then it reads the local counter again and, and assumes that the actual counter down there was read you know, halfway through uh, the overall latency. But there's a read request that goes down, there's a completion that comes back up, and that takes some time. 
And this could not be compensated for by uh, just reading the PHC twice instead of uh, the CPU twice. If you read it twice, then you'll still have that 500 nanosecond. There's, there's a bias, which is you don't know where in the entire latency of the read mm -hmm. the actual counter is captured. So without that information, without that knowledge, you don't know where to place it in that read latency. OK, and there is an asymmetry in that code, so. Uh, apparent, an apparent asymmetry, that's right. Right, OK, okay cool, thank you. Yeah. So one more question. Yes. Uh, uh, do we have also an input, like when it goes to the TGPIO? Or OK. Yeah, I didn't talk a lot about the TGPIO, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's well documented. Um, uh, yeah, it, it li it's like a software-defined pin on an Ethernet NIC. You can give a one-shot. Please, at this future time res with respect to yourself, put a rising edge or a falling edge. But also, please capture your time on the next rising edge as well. Yeah, so it's uh, input or output of a pulse per second or whatever you can, uh, would you, whatever you'd like to schedule. When the PCI TCM does actually show up when PCI switches, uh, what are the implications for the clocks that um, you know provide clocks to? I mean, timing signal to the PCI switches. Yes. What are the jitters required? Yes. Uh, so it's a good it's a good question. The biggest impact of P on PCIe switches in terms of time transfer accuracy will be the spread spectrum. You know, 0.5 percent downspread kind of a thing. So uh, I have. I'm not aware of any PCIe switches that I could talk about that support it, and so the measurements, to my knowledge, have not yet been taken, but um, the, 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 the residence time in a PCIe switch of a TLP transaction is relatively short, and we do have some analysis that, uh, that will map a particular residence time and uh, S spread spectrum clock to a, an, an inaccuracy, a pretty straightforward calculation. We could chat about it afterwards. Anything else? Okay. No more questions, then we have 10 minutes break and we, c we convene in 2.40.